a watercolor pencils tutorial. That's what I've got for you today. I'm going to show you seven easy hacks, easy ways of enhancing your landscape paintings by adding little details in watercolor pencils. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour as well as drawing a little bit of mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click on the little bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video here a week on a Thursday on YouTube with extra content for Patreon subscribers. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you will probably have noticed that I'm a big fan of using watercolor pencils and I like to use them in a particular way. I like to use them actually working into wet paint. So today we're going to be looking at some of those techniques and ways in which you can enhance your landscape paintings and they will save you so much time because it's really time consuming to paint lots of little details with a brush. I'm gonna show you some clever tricks, some clever hacks, some ways of using these watercolor pencils to get texture, to get detail, to get interest in your landscape paintings. So for the first hack, you can use your watercolor pencils actually to do your main underdrawing. Now this isn't something that I do all the time in my own work and you have to be careful about what you use this for. There are certain areas where you can't use this technique so I'm gonna point the camera downwards and show you exactly when and where you can and should use watercolor pencils instead of graphite pencils for your underdrawing. So let me show you briefly the materials I'm using today. I've got these Candash watercolour pencils. I have a large set here, so we've got lots of colours. I do have um, many different brands of watercolour pencils, but I thought we'd stick to these ones today because they're uh, quite easy to work with. I'll also be using these paints here. This is my essential set, so this is my beginner's set of watercolours, and I'll leave a link to those in the description. Those are made by Jackman's UK. And um, I'll also be using some SAA practice paper because we're just going to be painting little samples today. I'll be painting kind of mini landscapes, but it's just to show you how these things are done and because they fit on camera more easily. You can, of course, use these uh, techniques on any size of landscape painting. I'll be using synthetic watercolour painting brushes from Jackman's Art Materials. Again, I'll put the link to those in the description of this video. So let's get on with our first technique. So let's look at this idea of sketching your initial underdrawing with a watercolour pencils. Now, although many people recommend this, as I said, I don't do this for every painting. And that's because, to my mind, if you're looking for a very precise result, if you're doing something like botanical work, I do find that this can be, uh, it can lead to sort of scruffier edges. So I myself prefer always to do my underdrawing in graphite pencils, but you can use these to good advantage. If you find that you are getting a lot of your marks are staying and you're not getting rid of them at the end of your watercolor painting, there's too much graphite pencil left on your paper, you can try doing your underdrawing like this and then working in and we might have some trees perhaps on the horizon line and you can sketch these in. Now what I'd advise you to do here is to use mostly broken lines because watercolor pencil doesn't always dissolve fully. If for instance I do a big circle and I go around where this tree is going to be and then it doesn't dissolve properly I could find that I don't get a very good result at the end of it and it looks very unnatural so what I advise you to do is to use broken lines. I also wouldn't put any watercolor pencil in the sky. I wouldn't, for example, sketch things like clouds because that's an area where you really don't need any excess lines going on. If you find that you can't get rid of these things later on, it's gonna be difficult for you. But certainly for foregrounds, for trees, if you keep the edges broken, this can be a great technique. So what happens then is I'm ready to go on with my painting and um, I can just work into these areas and I should find that this color just dissolves and isn't at all visible by the end of the painting. Now, before you try this, what I'd like you to do is to have a go and just test out your own watercolor pencils on paper. Some of the cheaper ones especially do not dissolve completely. That's not always a bad thing. We're gonna be using other techniques within this video where we're going to need lines to stay on the paper. So even if you've got some of those cheaper watercolor pencils that don't dissolve very easily, you may find them very useful for making texture marks. But if you want to do this under drawing technique, you need good watercolor pencils that are going to dissolve nicely so that by the end of your picture, you don't have any harsh lines showing like so. 
at this point. As always, if you're getting value from this video, if you're enjoying this video, can I ask you please just to quickly click that thumbs up, that like button. If you like, share, subscribe, it's free, or leave me a comment. YouTube will push this video out to more people and I can teach more people how to paint. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. There's nothing worse in a watercolour painting than being faced with a huge expanse, perhaps a field, an area of grass, a foreground, and there's not much detail in it, and you simply don't know how to get detail and texture into that area. I'm going to show you how to combine a wet into wet technique with your watercolour pencils in order to easily get the impression of texture in your paintings. So for this next one, I've drawn a little bit of sky here and I'm going to work in a wet into wet. So I'm going to mix my greens on the paper by using blue and yellow directly on the paper. So I've got two blues here and I've got a couple of yellows and plus I've got yellow ochre as well. So this is my beginner's set and it should really get you uh, to the point where you can mix almost every color from it. Now some colors are not mixable from primaries, there are single pigment colors and all of that, but if you're starting out you just need a really really basic set and a split primary set is the way to go. So a split primary set is a primary set that has warm and cool primaries and that gives you a great range to mix from. So you can see I'm just putting my lights and darks directly on the paper here and then let's put some yellow ochre in the front. And then once I've got an underwash of color, before it dries, I'm going to work in and get some texture going on with my watercolor pencils. So I've got some green here. One thing I will say about this set actually is that um, it doesn't have the widest range of greens, but you don't just have to use greens here. You can use yellows and browns and ochres and get all sorts of areas of color going on. So we're just getting this not particularly you know visible objects such as things like bushes and trees but we're just getting this impression here of texture if these marks are too rough you can go back in with your brush and blend them even further until you get the results that you're looking for you can put more layers of color over them if you want to this will soften them even further and you can see how you can just start getting some really interesting landscape marks without having to paint every blade of grass. Now watercolour pencils are of course very suitable for doing linear things so I'm going to show you next how to get the impression of distant trees with some little branches, distant foliage, things like bushes up on the horizon, things that are a fair distance away. You just want that impression that there are one or two branches within an overall area of foliage. Let me show you how it's done. So for this next one, we're going to put some um, some little tree shapes, some very distant trees up here on the horizon. And I'm um, going to use the watercolour pencil just to get an impression of there being maybe a certain amount of branches showing there. You have to be quite subtle with this because you can end up just with it looking like you've drawn the branches on top of the paint. So what you want to do is leave some gaps so that we've got some little bits showing through like this. You can also use it where perhaps you have something growing um, up up on a trunk that's away from the ground like this and what I'm going to do here is just pick up a bit of the paint on the tip of my watercolour pencil just so that I'm using it not entirely dry and again I can come out here and get the impression of some branches and this is great for those sort of autumn type trees and, uh, and bushes and things where you've just got a little bit of foliage left just a little bit of something showing and you know all those neutral colors like browns and grays and we can just get that impression you could take it out a bit further if you've got some bare branches going on here and just get a really really natural effect for your distant trees now you've seen how when you work watercolor pencils into wet paint or just even into clean water you get very soft looking effects but you can still see lines we're going to use watercolor pencils next to get reflections in water so for this next one, I've painted a little stream and uh, there's sort of a bridge. We've got some sandy gravel going across the top and then we've got this sort of little, it's, it's not even a proper bridge, it's just a few planks of wood really. Get a lot of things like this over here because we have water meadows close by. So what I want to do is get the reflection of this bridge in the water. Now I can do one of two things. I can put another layer of paint down there, but if I'm happy with that layer of paint, what I can do actually is just work in with clean water. So what I'm going to do now is paint clean water on top and this has all dried by the way this is completely dry and the reason I've let it dry is because it will kind of stick the paint to the paper and you'll find 
that you don't get so much movement when you put another layer of water or paint on top. So let's put that in there and just taking this water along. The reason I'm taking it all the way along here, even though I'm not painting down this end, is because water itself can leave a drying line. So I won't put that there unless I have to. And then let me find a pencil that looks to be about the right color. And let's take this in. And what I'm doing now, working into wet paint and I'm just getting the reflection here in the water. So let's do that. And again, we can come along like this. And this is just such an easy way of getting a reflection of something that has some structure in your painting. Also good, of course, for things like trees. And there we are really easily. If we went in there with wet paint, there'd be a danger of it running and bleeding if we didn't control it carefully. So this is a really clever trick for getting your water reflections is to use a watercolor pencil. Next up, I have a technique that's great for adding texture to things like paths and gravel. You're going to need a sharp knife like this one. So here I've done a little landscape again and I've got a pathway and I want some texture on this pathway. Now there are multiple ways of getting texture on pathways. I've spoken in previous videos about using splattering, which is about the only time when I like to actually splatter my work. What we're going to do is we're going to get a knife like this one and we're going to shave little shavings and they're going to stick to the wet paper. Now we could, again, just like the last one, if you had painted this path and you felt it was already dark enough, you can just do this with clean water. But I actually would like to go a little bit darker. So I'm gonna get a little bit of Payne's Gray and a little bit of raw umber, and that's gonna give us this sort of neutral warm gray. And I'm gonna paint this in. As I said, you can use splattering, you can use wet into wet, all sorts of things. Let's put a little bit of some other color in here. Let's get a little bit of blue in there. Adding blue to brown will always make it grayer, so we can get some variation there by adding a bit of that in. And I can, if I want to, if I don't want, you know, a hard edge on this pathway, I can do what I did on the first layer, which was put some uh, clean water along the edge here and just get an idea of that pathway kind of fading into its surroundings. I'm going to get my pencil and I'm just gonna shave like this. So I'm literally holding this uh, pretty much, you'd think you'd have to angle it, but it's, it's usually best if it's more like at a right angle. And the paper needs to be wet for this to happen. If you do this and the little bits fall off, it means that your paper wasn't wet enough. It is unusually hot here in the UK today. It is surprisingly warm. It probably won't last. And there we get that very, very subtle speckling. It's also a technique that you can use for botanicals, for pollen and things like that. And it just gives this real, real subtle texture. Depending, of course, on how hard you press, you can get larger or smaller pieces falling on your paper, but I think it's really, really effective. And the difference between this and splattering is that you don't get, with splattering, you tend to get very circular marks. With this, you get almost little angular shapes. Sometimes you get little long straight shapes. It really, really does look very natural, more natural probably than splattering, if you're looking for that realism and for those little stones on your path. Another subject where you really need to get texture and interest is, of course, beaches. So I'm going to show you now how to turn that sort of bland expanse of beach into something that's got pebbles, maybe even a few footprints. And we're going to use watercolor pencils to do it. So here I've got a tiny seascape and I've got some waves here and I've just got this uh, this beach in the foreground here. Again, I'm going to take a layer a little bit darker over the top. And then I'm going to work straight in with my watercolor pencils. I want to fade this as it goes into the waves there. If you're wondering how I've done the waves, I used some candle wax to reserve those whites. I do have other videos on reserving without using masking fluids. You can have a look at those in the playlist. And again, while it's wet, I'm going to work straight in. Perhaps I could get some footsteps going on here. Color may be a little bit too yellow. Let's go to a more light brown. I can also get pebbles and rocks if I want them. So here, although I could combine this again with the last technique of shaving, I can also work straight in and do those larger pebbles. And we can be very accurate here and we can actually make them get smaller as they go up towards the distance. And we can have some larger ones here in the foreground. I can do the whole pebble in watercolor pencil or what I can do is do sort of an outline a side like that and then I can get the paintbrush and manipulate or perhaps drop another color in and again I can also get an idea of footprints if I want to so anywhere you've got a beach 
and you want some little marks, you either want pebbles or stones or footprints. You could also use this uh, with different colors entirely, of course, for snow as well, for snowy footprints. Really, really useful and so much quicker and more natural looking than trying to paint it with a brush. So I've saved the best till last and this next technique is probably the most useful one that you will find when you're painting landscapes and this is to use watercolour pencils to get the impression of large grasses, reeds, anything like that, anything that's growing, any grass-like texture. Let me show you how it works. So here I've got a little miniature river. I'm going to take another layer of paint across the top. This is called glazing and what this will do, it will allow the underneath colours to show through but it's just going to make everything seem a little bit more solid. If you ever have an area where things are, are not that solid, I'm thinking actually of doing a, uh, a YouTube video about glazing techniques and uses for them because it's a really, really useful technique to know. So I'm just taking that layer of wet paint across where I've already painted. What I'm going to do now is before it dries, I'm going to go straight in and work in some grasses, particularly along the edge of this river. Now, sometimes before you start this, it's a good idea to make sure that your, um, your pencils have been sharpened and we're gonna take those grasses in. You always want to be thinking about perspective and for certain they would be larger here at the base than they would be further up. You want to mix and match your colors so that they're not all, you know, for instance, this bright green, we've got a duller green here, which is much more subtle. I can get this in as well. And I can start working those grasses all the way along the edge of this river. I can also put some further in if I want. Now the technique with this is you always want to go up and outwards because as you lift your pencil off the paper, it will taper. So you always wanna go upwards with these or in the direction that things are growing. We can go in with some dark gray as well if we think that would be appropriate. Remember to keep it quite natural. Grasses often cross over and grow a bit rough looking. And I can just work into this painting and get as many of these foreground grasses as I want. Sometimes you'll find that the whole front of a picture is taken up with reeds and things growing like this. I can also make sure that in the distance I get some smaller marks and perhaps along the edge of this river. Again, I'll make sure that the ones in the distance are much smaller, that they get bigger as they come forward. This is such a fantastic and easy way of getting grasses into your painting. I would and I could, of course, go much further with this and of course repeat on the other side and straight away you've got all of this grass. If you combine it with some of the other texture methods I've shown you in this video as well, work up in layers, you're going to have the most amazingly textured, interesting landscapes. And using these pencils for grasses and reeds is absolutely one of my favorite techniques and definitely one of the most effective. So do let me know in the comments which one of these techniques you found the most useful if you're going to use any of these in your own work. And before you leave this video, don't forget to pop into the video description. Just click the little down arrow. You'll find lots of really useful information there, including a free downloadable PDF that you can grab for no money whatsoever that will give you some watercolor pencils tips. I also have a full length watercolor pencils flower painting course where we're just using watercolor pencils if that's a medium that you really enjoy. And in addition to that, I have another free video that's going to give you even more watercolor pencils tips in this video with concentrate on landscapes but there's lots of other ways that you can use watercolor pencils in your own work too you can watch that video right now